Welcome back. Today we're going to look at the next section, partial fractions. Uh, again, uh, one more stop on our tour of techniques of integration. Um, it's going to give us a method of finding antiderivatives for certain types of functions for which none of the other techniques that we've looked at have worked. Um, this one, though, is usually the easiest to decide you've got to use it. We can use it in a very special case. Polynomial over polynomial. That's when we're going to use a partial fractions. I'm going to give you the big idea of what's going on here, and then we'll look at some, some individual examples. All right, so let's look, at, uh, let's look at something like this. Suppose that I wanted to integrate this function, 1 over x squared plus x. A u substitution doesn't work because no matter what, what I let u be, I can't find its derivative. It's not parts because there's not a product. Uh, it's not a trig substitution because it's not uh, an x squared plus 1 or a 1 minus x squared. And so none of our favorite things so far are going to work for this integral. And so the idea here is to, to look at this as x, x plus 1. I factor an x out, and now I'm going to do something a little clever with this 1 over x times x plus 1. So I'll come back to the integral in a minute, and let's, let's think about it like this. So 1 over x, x plus 1. Here's the idea. I can actually rewrite this using some algebra, do some algebraic manipulation, rewrite this in a way that's going to allow me to integrate this function. Um, okay, so here's the idea. Suppose that I had just this right-hand side. There's some, uh, some numerator here and some numerator here, and I tried to add the, the two things up on the right-hand side. If I tried to add this right-hand side up, well, I have to get a common denominator. But the common denominator would actually be x times x plus 1. So by getting a common denominator, I'm going to make something that looks just like this. And so the claim is that we can do the reverse. If I have a fract if I have a product in the denominator, I can break it up into pieces, uh, one fraction which contains each of the terms in, in the original denominator. And so let's think about how we could actually do that. So for this particular in this particular case, I'm looking for a constant a and a constant b to put over here so that when I actually add this back up, I get to what I want, 1 over x, x plus 1. Now, if I can do that, then I need, when integrating this left-hand side, I just have to integrate the two pieces on the right. But this first one is just like 1 over x, which is a natural log. The second one is actually just like 1 over x as well, which is a natural log. So by doing that, I can integrate this funny-looking rational function, polynomial over polynomial. So let's see how I can find a and b. The first thing that I'm going to do is actually multiply both sides by x, x plus 1. And if I do that, the reason that I do that is because it clears out any denominators. I get a 1 on the left. If I multiply this through, then the x cancels and I get a times x plus 1. If I multiply this through, the x plus 1 cancels and I get b times x. Now, if, if you look at the problems that are in my math labs and you view an example, the, they're going to give you a different method from here on out. I prefer my method, that's why I'm going to show it, but their method is a little bit different. You can use either you if you like. It's going to... Uh, both methods will get you to the right answer in the end, and the same answer. Um, but mine actually, I feel like it is a little bit less work, and you have to deal with less uh, funny stuff going on. Our goal here is to figure out what a and b are. And the idea is that this has to be true no matter what x is. It's got to be true for all x values, because we're looking at 1 over x times x plus 1. It's got to equal a over x plus b over x plus 1 as functions. So it's got to be true for all x values. Now, if it's got to be true for all x values, it's got to be true for some specific x values. So let's uh, look at this equation if x is 0. If x is 0, this becomes 
a times 1 plus b times 0, which tells me that a is 1. We can also look at this equation if x is negative 1. The reason that I picked 0 was because it made this go to 0. If I pick x equal negative 1, it makes this term go to 0, and it's as easy as possible to figure out what a and b are. So this becomes b, negative b is 1, which tells me that b is negative 1. So now I know a and b. So what we've discovered is that 1 over x, x plus 1 is a, which was 1, and b, which was negative 1. And we can check that. 1 over x plus minus 1 over x plus 1 is 1 over x times x plus 1 over x plus 1. I'm going to get my common denominator plus negative 1 over x plus 1 times x over x. Again, get my common denominator. And in the end, uh, this becomes x plus 1 plus negative x over x, x plus 1, which is 1 over x, x plus 1. So it works. And so what that means is that if I want to integrate the left, it's the same as integrating the right. But this right integrates to natural log absolute value of x. This is natural log minus, this is just natural log absolute value of x plus 1. And again, the my math labs does a, one more piece of algebra before it, it gives you the final solution. Remember our, our log rules, if we subtract natural logs, that's the same as dividing. So either of these are fine. Actually, if you put this solution in as your answer on the homeworks, it'll accept it. If you put this in, it'll accept it as well. All right, let's look at one that's a bit more complicated. We want to find this antiderivative, still polynomial over polynomial. We're going to apply the same first method. We're going to try to break this up into three pieces. Each of which has a numerator. Now we'll see, we'll talk about this more in the future, but as it turns out, if our denominator is a linear factor, when we break it apart, the numerator just has to be a constant. Even though this has an x over here, we're going to be able to make that work. We only need one degree less uh, in the numerator. We'll talk about what to do if the, these, these denominators are even more complicated. But for now, this is, our, this is our procedure. If we multiply both sides of this equation by that entire denominator, well, the entire denominator cancels and we get x. If we multiply this whole thing by the entire denominator, well, for this piece, the only thing that cancels is the x plus 1, and what's left is the, the other stuff, x minus 1, x minus 2. The x minus 1 will cancel with the b term, and we'll still have x plus 1, x minus 2. And similarly, we'll have c times x plus 1, x minus 1. And now, as before, we need to choose some values of x which will make our life easy. The ones that make our life easy are the ones that make some of these terms go to zero. So that should be clear that if I let x equal 1, that'll make this go to zero. If I let x equal 2, that'll make this go to zero. And if I let x equal negative 1, that'll make this one go to zero. So those are our three values of x that we're going to pick. If x is 1, this equation becomes 1 equals a times 0 plus b times 2 
times minus 1 plus c times 0, which tells me that negative 2b is 1, so b is negative 1 half. If x is 2, then I get 2 equals 0 plus 0 plus uh, c times 3 times 1. So that tells me that 3c is 2, so c is 2 thirds. And finally, if x is minus 1, I get negative 1 equals a times negative 2 times negative 3 plus 0 plus 0. Which tells me that negative 1 is 6a, so a is uh, negative 1 sixth. And so that tells me that the integral of x over x minus 1, x minus 2, x plus 1, is the integral of a minus 1 sixth over x minus 1 plus b minus 1 half over x minus 2 plus c, which is 2 thirds, over x plus 1 dx. And all of these are natural logs as well. This is just a con this is like 1 over x minus 1 with the constants out front. Minus 1 6 ln absolute value of x minus 1. Minus 1 half ln absolute value x minus 2. Plus 2 thirds ln absolute value of x plus 1 plus c. And that's the final answer. You could use some algebra with the log rules, but we don't even need to worry about it. We'll do one more for now. In this one, something a little bit different happens. For this one, I have these two pieces, and we're going to start with the same basic idea. We want to break it up into the two different pieces. Notice that I can't factor that x squared plus 1 anymore. That's a parabola that opens up. It's above the x-axis because it's plus 1. It doesn't go through the x-axis at all, so there are no roots, so there are no zeros, so there are no factors doesn't factor at all, uh, which if it did factor, we would have to factor it out and break it up into some more pieces, but we can't factor it at all, so this is what we've got. This is a linear factor, so its numerator is a constant. This is a quadratic factor, and in that situation, we need its numerator to be a generic one degree less polynomial. So this is x squared, so we need a generic x to the first power, which will be bx plus c. That's as generic as we could get with one degree less than our denominator. And then we go through the same process. Multiply everything by the denominators. That clears out this denominator, and I get x squared. If I multiply by the denominator here, then x minus 1 cancels, and we're left with x squared plus 1. The x squared plus 1 will cancel, and we'll have bx plus c times x minus 1. And in this situation, there's only one nice value for, of x to plug in, which is x equal 1. If we plug in x equal 1, that'll make this whole thing to go to 0. But there's nothing else I could plug in for x, because this never is 0. So there's no way to make that turn 0. But we'll see what to do about that. I'm going to save my original question. So if we let x equal 1... This becomes 1 is equal to a times 2 plus 0. So that tells me that a is 1 half. Now what? Well, we still need to know what b and c are. We still got to figure those out. 
and there's no nice values of x to plug in, so the only other option are to plug in not as nice values for x. You can plug anything you want in for x, in fact. If I can, I usually pick 0, because 0 is the next best nice thing. If I plug x equals 0 in this equation, read 0 is a, which we know is 1 half, times 0 squared plus 1, which is 1, plus b times 0, plus c times minus 1, which becomes 0 is 1 half plus negative c, so c is equal to 1 half. And finally, we need to plug any other value for x in. There's no other real good choices. Uh, we'll just plug in uh, 2. If I plug x equal 2 into this equation, I guess 4 is a, which is 1 half, times 4 plus 1, which is 5, plus b, which I don't know yet, x is, four, is 2, C I know, C is 1 half, times X minus 1, which is 1. And so that becomes 4 is 5 halves plus 2B plus 1 half. So that's 6 halves, which is 3. So that's 1 is 2B which says that b is 1 half. So now we can simplify our integration and say that this is equal to the integral of a over x minus 1 plus bx plus c. 1 half x plus 1 half over x squared plus 1 dx. This first one is pretty easy to deal with. Right? The first one, I can just say that that is 1 half ln absolute value of x minus 1. The second one is a bit more complicated. Let's see what we can do about that. What I'm actually going to have to do, so we're going to see a bunch more of these, um, and it takes a little bit of time to recognize what's going on. This looks a little bit complicated. What I actually have to do is break this up into two pieces. I'm going to break this up into 1 half x over x squared plus 1 dx by breaking this up into the first and then the second plus integral of 1 half over x squared plus 1 dx. Well, this I can write. I can bring that 1 half out front. And now we should be able to recognize this one. Right, that's tan inverse from before. So this is tan inverse with the 1 half out front. In some situations, they're going to be more complicated, and we'll have to actually figure out with the appropriate tangent substitution what it is. Maybe it's tan inverse x over 3 or something, something more, a little bit more funny. But this, this particular one just becomes tan inverse. This one, we're still going to have to do a little bit of work on. Let me still bring that 1 half out, and then it looks like this. x over x squared plus 1. And this is where things start to get a little tricky because we started off doing partial fractions. In the middle of it, we noticed we got an ln. We noticed that we got a tan inverse. So that's already a, a huge mess. This, unless you see enough of these, it's a little bit tricky to notice that this all just goes back to a u substitution. If I let u equal the denominator, x squared plus 1, then the derivative is 2x. And I can make 2x dx. So let's, let's bring that up over here. If I wanted to integrate x over x squared plus 1 dx, I would let u equal x squared plus 1. So the du is 2x dx. Put a 2 in, take the 2 out, so that this becomes 1 half. 2x dx is du. x squared plus 1 is u. 
So that's one half ln absolute value of u, and u is x squared plus one. One half ln absolute value of x squared plus one plus c. And that's our evaluation of the, the integral x over x squared plus one. So to, final, to write our final answer, we still have that one half that's out front. So we get a one half ln absolute value x minus one plus one half times that, which is one fourth ln absolute value x squared plus one plus this piece, one half tan inverse x plus c. And now we're done. It's a, it's a bit messy, and we're going to practice a bunch more of those. And you'll see a bunch more of those on the homework. Uh, but uh, that's the basics for now. And so we'll see you next time.